Good morning. Lots and lots happening today. Again, Dad spraying corn today. We got all the beans done yesterday, so he's on to the corn. And some of the corn's already been done, some of it hasn't, so he should get the rest of it done today. Uh, I am getting the tender truck loaded up with some seed. Gonna put some seed on the gooseneck trailer, and Phil and I are gonna go to Berkey. Ugh, if I can get these doors open, so I can get the forklift out. There we go. Um, once we go down there and see how things are, we're probably going to come back. We're going to take a look at uh, uh, some stuff up here, but we're going to plant some corn. We may move a field cultivator down there. I don't know. we got lots going on. Brock should be here later. It's going to be a good day. Okay, well we got a heavy one today. Six boxes on there. Uh, the nice thing about what we're doing going down to Berkey there is those are all the same varieties. So we got six boxes of the same two five beans. We are going to need another two, two of these uh, two eights here, um, but we can just set those straight on the seed tender when we take the tender down. So that's the plan. All right, we're going to head back to the farm. Phil's been working on our disc, uh, changing a bearing and well, yeah, it's it's been a project for him. Um, but we're going to help him finish that up probably and then take this and head out. Oh, I should probably strap those down. Yeah, 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 we should strap them down. We made it! So this is our Berkey farm where my dad grew up. And... Uh, we've got a pretty good little group of ground around here. Obviously, we've got another grain system. And some buildings and stuff here so um, we're gonna we're gonna check some fields around but I'm gonna get this seed unloaded we're gonna put it in the barn here this is all all beans I've got Phil bringing the uh, semi with a tender trailer with our starter on it there's a box of corn on there we'll bring more when we bring our seed tenders down um, hopefully we'll be here this afternoon or tonight planting on the way down here there was a fair bit of activity in different places um, but it's mostly the guys on the lighter ground that have been working and then you get to an area where it's heavier ground and not much is happening and then there's some more and then not much super close to where we're at now. That doesn't mean that it's too wet, but what the neighbors are doing is a pretty good indication of whether or not we will be able to be in the fields. Still made it. We got the boxes of beans off. Took that box of corn off. Now we gotta go check some fields. Well, we went to look. It's a little wet yet. Phil's with me, it's really hard to film, but uh, maybe tomorrow. We're gonna try and get stuff ready to go, but it's not ready to go yet, especially the corn stalks. All right, we're back at Walder. Did I tell you that yet? Honestly, I have no idea where we left off. I went and got something to eat, picked up a hitchhiker, and we're gonna go check some fields around here and see if anything is dry enough to do any tillage here. I doubt it, but we're gonna go look anyway. We've got a big field of corn stalks here. This is a wetter farm, notoriously, so I don't expect it to be dry, but we'll go drive through this muddy spot just so we're 100% sure that it is. Oh, boy, go, go, go. oh no, don't go. <laughs> it is indeed too wet. And this is why we have to disc it, because we have ruts like that. I, I'm not too concerned about getting the gators stuck, so it's, uh, it'll take a while on that spot. Oh, God. We can tore this field up with the combine. That's no good. Planted cornfield. Thought we'd stop and check this one. Oh, she's getting hard. That's my concern is crusting. There's a corn. Oh, it's getting close. Look at that. Oh, maybe I got that one. They're coming. Yep, right there, right there. Cool. Those will start poking through tonight or tomorrow, I bet. 
That's good. Hopefully we don't have any crusting issues. Well, that's no good. This is one of two cornfields that we have left to field cultivate here at Round Walter, you know, outside of the Berkey stuff. And while the top of the ridges here, I'm sure, are fine, there's a lot of low ground. We got water in our corn stalks over there. We got water down there. Some of that we farm around. It's yeah, it's, it's just wet, but hey, hey, hey. See, then there's this spot where we couldn't even get all the beans out of it because it was so wet last fall. And now they're laying flat because the water got on them, but those are ruts from the combine where we had to back out. Ah, <laughs> uh, what are we gonna do with that? That's not good, not good at all. Even here in some of our blacker dirt on the side of the slope where the water didn't pond, it's just goo, it's not, it's not dry. So here we've got a field that I would like to just plant today. Now don't go deeper, go back. But it's pretty. Mud ball -y. I don't know. The nice thing with this one is it's already worked. And so we don't have to do any tillage, we just have to get across it with the planter. And well, we've got tracks and we're not as destructive to the ground as we used to be, but it's still gonna compact stuff down deep. And so the drier it can be, the better. I don't know, that one's borderline. If there's wetter spots, we probably shouldn't. If the rest of the field is drier, we probably would do it and be okay. See now here, up on the yellower ground and towards the tops, we're fine. It's, that would go no problem. This just needs a couple hours. Doesn't need a whole day. It needs a couple hours, right? What happened here, Brock? Well, let's see, the combine driver doesn't listen to the green card. Oh, <laughs> listen to him. Uh-huh. It's always somebody else's fault when you get stuck. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's still too wet, guys. It's still too wet. We do have this one, though. This is the one that I thought would go yesterday, but there's only 10 acres here. We'll have to finish up from what we had, where we had gotten rained out. Um, we can plant this, but it's 10 acres. Okay, so if we are going to plant that 10 acres, we've got to clean off the planter because the seed that's in there is the wrong seed for that field. So we're going to start with that. And look, I've got enough fertilizer in there to do that. Sweet. I could drop the back tank if I wanted to. It's empty. I might do that. We might just do that and we'll just take the planter over. Um, but anyway, we got to get the seed out of there and I've actually got that stuff in those bags that will finish it up. So that's the plan here. All right, let's fire up the tractor and do a little bit. So we're gonna, we got the seed out of the um, central fill tanks there. We're gonna take it outside. We're gonna drop that back tank just because there's no reason to drag it around. And uh, we'll put a little bit of seed in, enough to plant 10 acres. My sales rep just stopped by because he's gotta pick some seed up down there. Look what he brought me, guys. Look what he brought. Oh, I'm so excited for this. John Deere and Bush, they, they made beer cans just for me. Just, just for me. How about that? Okay, these four open bags are what we took out of that planter uh, when we switched and got rained out there before and then went to that other field. So um, those are the four that are going back in. This unopened one and that unopened one are the same variety that we're gonna throw them on the platform in case we need them. But uh, that should do it. Look at it. Wow, that's cool. Okay. We are ready to finish this up. So I gotta remember how to do this. Um, we gotta click this one. Nope, click that one on. That turns our variable rate um, seeding, the hydraulic motors for the seed rate. Uh, these two are the vacuum fans. And this one 
is our hydraulic pump. And then we put the covers on them so we don't bump them. This one we can open. The three-point hitch we put all the way down. Okay. And we need to prime our seed plates. So we're going to turn the section control off because it thinks we've already planted this spot, which we have. Uh, and then we hit this button and we hit that one. And that turns those hydraulic motors to... Uh, prime the plates basically get seeds stuck to them and there I see some falling out so we are good to go we'll hit this back on and we should be in the right roughly spot so we'll go and hit the auto steer button oh we gotta turn auto track on and then hit the auto steer button and it will find our line and auto steer for us we can turn our flashers off okay and then we hit this one and it puts the planter in the ground and it'll take it a second but it should start planting oh yeah uh, open our valve up there we got fertilizer and we got seed so now we do that Get up to our five miles an hour, and off we go. Uh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. All good. Give it a minute to get adjusted, and these pops should, yep, there they go. Start coming back up to where we want them. Cool deal. Okay, so in an effort to have enough video for today, because I'm not doing anything right, let's talk about a few things. Um, one, this is the first corn we have planted since, I believe, April 30th. It was a Saturday night, the night of the car accident, you know, that whole fiasco. Uh, anyway, today is the 12th of May, 11th of May, 11th, yeah, 11th. Uh, so it's been 11, 12 days since we planted anything, and um, I am very, very thankful and glad we've got what we do in the ground already. I'm a little concerned about the crusting issues that we're starting to see, but another couple days will tell the story on whether that's a real problem or not. But so there's kind of a rule of thumb, I guess you could say, in uh, most of the Midwest that every day after May 10th that you plant corn, you lose one bushel of potential per day. So today's the 11th. That means that we've lost one bushel of potential. You get 10 days from now and or on the 20th, and it's 10 bushel, and it adds up. Now, it's not hugely significant, and ground conditions still trump the calendar. However... The later we get, the less potential that we have. And so, as we're going around looking at these fields, evaluating them for, is it dry enough, is it too wet, um, this equation starts to change the later into May and especially into June that we get. In April, we've got lots of time and we can be patient and wait for ground conditions. Ground conditions are everything. Um, right now, ground conditions are still really, really important and we want it to be dry. You ask me in two weeks, we'd be planting just about every field that we have right now because it's late and it needs to get done now. Um, but we're not there quite yet. And so that's why um, I'm, I'm pushing just a little bit, trying to get this stuff done, but we're also being pretty patient right now. I was really hoping to be done by Saturday. That's not likely to happen at this point because it's just not dry enough. If we could plant this and the other field that we looked at and the one other one that I looked at yesterday that there's no way is going to go today and then go to Berkey tomorrow and finish that and come back on Friday to plant those last couple of fields, then maybe, maybe we could have finished by Saturday and things would have been good, but it's not dry enough to allow that to happen. So we're going to do what we can and um, we'll get there, but it's not ideal conditions anymore. So there's another factor that you guys may or may not know about, right? I've talked about it before, but um, my wife is 37 weeks pregnant. We're gonna have a baby in like two weeks. And so I would really like to be done planting corn between now and then, very, very much so. Uh, so that's part of why I've pushed things a little bit all spring. Not that I wanna do it wrong, but it's gotta get done and it's gotta get done now. And part of the reason for that also is that there is nobody else on this farm that knows how to run this corn planter especially this tractor and monitor.
So it's Brock's lucky day. We're gonna have a little training session. You get to plant like four acres. It's better than nothing when you have your baby. Right. <laughs> so in the event that it starts raining on Saturday and rains for two weeks and then I'm out and it's go time and I cannot be here, Brock has to finish. So we're gonna teach him how to do it. This, this seat's no good. Not as fun. Oh man. Okay, Brock, you ready for this? Yep. Okay, listen and learn. Listen. Okay. Okay. So there's a trigger button behind there. Do you find that one? Mm -hmm. You have to push that button and then push it forward or back to make it go. Okay. Dad can't figure that one out. It took him a while. All right, so go ahead and just start going and keep making our turn. And then when you get pointed somewhat in the right direction, you're going to hit number 12 there, which is the auto steer button. Hit it, okay? Now it should find itself and it will drive the tractor straight for you. Okay, now hit the bottom of the A button and that'll drop the planter, go. Okay, now take that arm and move it towards the window. Do it again. There you go, nope, still didn't go. Yeah, hold the button. No, don't hold the button, there you go. So that takes us to our preset, our five miles per hour planting speed. And that's it. Can you handle that? Uh, it's, it's it's not really it's it. The to the field, like, <laughs> and chemicals and right, I understand. So, like I like I say, when everything's working right, anybody can do this. This is the easy part, but it gets a lot harder and more complicated than this. So, uh, but this is where you start and get a feel for it. Okay, we should probably get out and take a look before we uh, plant too much. So we're we're two rounds into it here. Yeah. Lift it up turn. So we're going to stop here on this end and uh, turn, 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 stay out of the ditch. Okay, you're getting too close now, too close, too close. All right, let's go take a look. So the ground is quite firm out here because it's it's sort of a stale seat bed now. It's been rained on. It's not soft and loose, um, but it's pretty smooth for the most part. It's still planting really well. Um, so right here, you'll notice right, right this pass is the center of our planter. So right here, a planter tire ran. Right here, the tracks and a planter tire ran. And so I don't, I don't know if this is going to work or not, but that pushes into the ground I mean, it's not super easy, but it's not super hard. It's not significantly different than where the tires did not hit. Over here, where the tracks ran, it's definitely more compacted. I can still get it in the ground, but it takes considerably more effort. The tractor is heavy, right? And I know that. The advantage to the tracks is that it's all in this row instead of being in both this row and this row. And uh, I think that's where we're going to save a ton of yield and, and potential there. Um, so, but we'll do a little digging, see what we can see in our depth and placement. We got a little sidewall. I don't like that. I don't like, I don't like that you can see this defined V of where that seed is being placed. Right there is the kernel. And the depth is pretty good. We're right around two inches. We're light enough now, I probably could shallow it up a notch. Man, I don't like that at all. Um, but deeper is always better or better than too shallow. Now this side doesn't look so bad. There's our seed. Depth is good again. That one, you don't have nearly the defined trench. So it's just gonna vary a lot. We're gonna plant this and then that's gonna be it for today. We're not gonna go to that other field. We're gonna, we're gonna be patient, but like I said, it's gotta get done sooner better than later. What's that from, Brock? We got a trail of kernels here. That's a problem. Let's go find out why. We found the problem. That is what happens when the little elbow in there falls off. Take care of our seed catcher there, Brock. So we gotta pull the plate out on this one. All that will fall off or fall out. We can fix the elbow and put it back on there. It was spilling over this is what was happening and falling out, so. Pull the plate. Directs the 
seat down so it can't fill up this whole chamber and yeah, you're good. Put the plate back in. Okay, so we're getting close to the end here. So when we get down to the end, we're gonna go and plant along the grass over there. But we're gonna see how our auto steer lines line up. If we're sort of close with the current line and it works out even, we're just gonna use it. If we're not, then you'll have to uh, either see if we got a line stored in there or freehand it and use marker. So when you get to the corner, then turn and try and line up the edge of the planter with the edge of the grass. Too close, too close, you're too close. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Okay, so that's about where we want to be. We're off four foot that way. Not gonna go, we'll have two rows in the grass. Okay, so go into uh, guidance on the bottom there. And then in the top corner it says set track. West side, click that one. <coughs> okay. Now we gotta shift it because they're never where they're supposed to be. So hit that center shift track button. There you go. And that should work. We are gonna drop a marker anyway just because. So make sure we're on manual left side. So the top button is right left. The one underneath it is auto versus manual. One well, manual, okay. So that is gonna be either hydraulic number two or your B button. No, we don't need to drop it yet when we start going. So you can hit your auto steer and start moving and drop the planner. All five things at once. So. Trigger, forward, A. Trigger. Trigger, forward, A. Auto steer, B. Speed. Yeah. Now you gotta still watch it because just because we have a line doesn't mean the line is right. So if we start drifting too far from that line, either keep shifting it over or no. auto steer it, yes, like now. Don't go too much. They're four inch increments. I don't like, yeah. It's possible the line's no good and you just need to freehand it, but. Uh, when I'm watching this later, remember to delete this line. It's no good. It's no good. It's way off. Can you hit the X button up there in the corner of your screen? X. Page over, flag, rock right there, boom, got it. There's a big rock over there. So we can put a flag down so we can come back to it. So we are, we did drop that marker so that it's making that line over there. And that line marks the center of the next pass. So when we get up here to the corner, first thing you're gonna do is lift your marker, so the top will be, and you can do that anytime. And then when we get all the way up here to the corner, to oh, somewhere in there, you're just gonna lift the planter up and stop. Lift the planter up and stop. Pull that back, hold it back, hold it back, hold it back. There you go. Okay, now if we can make this turn and that's not too rough, go ahead and turn around. Turn, 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 turn. Okay, and get yourself lined up with our marker mark and plant back the other way. Do I have to freehand this, sir? Yes, you have to freehand this. I like to have two planter passes parallel to the side because when dad comes in here to spray it, our sprayer is 120 foot um, boom, and so three planter passes is one sprayer pass. So he will follow exactly on our second pass off of the edge of the field, and having that marker mark there makes it really easy for him to get lined up and straight and easy to follow. So. Lucky for you, that big curve we just had in those rows, it's not anywhere close to a road, so nobody can see it. Exactly. Except for the thousands of people watching you online. It's all right. Not the first thing I've done wrong. <laughs> all right, uh, hit your hydraulic. Just just click, flick it off. Uh, we got a couple rows that will quit planting. We maybe need to level our seed tanks off or add just a little bit more. That's why we threw an extra bag on. So we have from the end of the planter to right there to plant. It's less than a round, a pass and a half. Do I really have to open up another bag? I think I do, dang it. 
Okay, so we got that field done over there and we were just looking through some of the screens on the menu and showing them how what all is there and what to monitor and that kind of stuff. And can you guys see that? Can you see? There's a, you can't see. There's a strip in the middle of the field that does not appear to have a coverage map. And it's entirely possible I missed a strip with screwing around with end rows and varieties and different stuff. And so we're just gonna go double check it. Since we're in the back of the field, we gotta drive up anyway. Uh, if we need to plant up, we're gonna plant up, and I, I, I think I see a strip that needs to be planted. So yeah, go this way. Interesting. Missed one. Good thing we came back here. <laughs> think you can handle this? This, honestly, this isn't as intimidating as folding and unfolding. Oh well, we'll get to that in a second here. I'm gonna retire now. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> all right well we'll have this pass done and then we'll be done here and we can uh, head back to the farm and uh we are going to move the fuel cultivator to Berkey because because oh there goes dad all right so we're done with the field you gotta learn how to fold up a planter so first thing we do is put it in neutral because the tractor needs to be able to roll and push forward or back as that tongue extends so um, now we've got that in neutral. You're gonna lift up on the three point a little bit until the tongue looks kind of level. I would say somewhere in there, all right? Now hit your, uh, on your fold box over there in the corner, hit that over to transport, okay? Now you're gonna have to hold down the fold button. You have to hold it and then hit your number one remote and hold that back. And that, oh, we didn't, hold on, okay. Uh, float, oh, no, do not ever pull those back. Don't ever, ever, ever pull those back. Push them down and forward to float until they click and stay. Down, there you go, that one. Uh, number six. Number three. Yep, so that floats all of our hydraulic motors and uh, that lets those vac fans coast down. They're fine, but all right, so now we can keep folding. Now as the two wings start coming together, you gotta watch the hooks and see how they are in relation to the tongue. The worst thing you can do is hit that, that one hook on our new hydraulic hoses that are on top there or the fertilizer openers that are underneath. So we gotta be very careful and just kinda go slow. So you're way too low. So you gotta bring their, your three point up. Up, 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 up. Try that, okay, fold it together a little bit more. Keep going. Keep going, keep going. Still a little low. Bring it up a little more, a little more. Uh, yeah, all right, it'll go. You just got a little pocket there between them fertilizer openers and those hooks. Yep, so that one's good, and the other one is good. Now lift, yep, and then now lift that all the way up, click it, okay. And then I'll hold the wing wheels button and do the same thing. And that raises the wing wheels and lifts the mainframe, and you're folded. Back to the farm we go here. All right, so we we're getting ready to go back on the road. So we need our flashers. So there's two buttons. That one's for the beacon. On the other end is the flashers. Yep, there you go. Okay, you're good this way. So now as you get out on the road, you know, you hold that forward and you accelerate, right? Yep. You hold that forward. But if you click it, you will accelerate to your set point, which in this case is 20 miles an hour. So just go ahead and click it. There you go, and it'll take care of accelerating. So, and that 20 is programmable. We're going a short distance. You could go faster, but we're going from here to the corner. You don't really need to. But like uh, our long distance when we're heading to Berkey, 20 miles an hour. That's all we're gonna go. And there's a chart over there. There's a chart. Somebody was asking. There's a chart to tell you how fast you can go, but you got to be loaded up pretty good before you're really restricted. He made it. Look at that. He made it. Okay, well, um, we're gonna take this big old beast down to Berkey. We are not going to use it. Dang, there's way too much oil in there. I wonder if we're sitting funny. Um, we're not gonna use it here before Berkey dries out. There's only really two fields to do here um, with the field cultivator, at least before we can disc them. We've got a couple of fields that are gonna get disced and then field cultivated, but they're all wetter fields that are towards the end of the list. So, uh, Berkey is the priority, and I'm hoping we can do it tomorrow. We're gonna make sure we're ready, 
So I'm gonna drive this tractor down there. It is not a fun trip to make. We're wide, it's big, it's long. But we're gonna go do it and get it down there. So see you guys in a while. Well, we're probably 15 miles to the east of our farm here. And this is a tough area for me to drive through right now because everybody is out. Everybody. There's a tractor in all of these fields. Guy planting right over there. Dust is flying everywhere. Oh, man. This is good for them. We made it. I doubt it's drier. At least not much, but we made it. So we had this road shut down waiting for construction and the lady with the flag just put her flag in the car, got in it, and is leaving. That clock is about a minute and a half slow. It's five o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> we probably sat there for five minutes. They weren't letting anybody from either way until they're just like, all right, we're going home. The planter is gone. Phil must be planting beans, that's good. He was finishing up a field, he had 15 or 20 acres to do as well. So um, I am thinking that we are going to get stuff ready for tomorrow. Uh, that 40 acres that we looked at, we're gonna plant it first thing in the morning early, I think. So I wanna get my tank hooked back up and get seed around for that. Probably load the planter up. Um, but we aren't going tonight. Yeah, that's the plan. Nope. Change of plans, that took about 10 minutes. Um, I am not gonna plant that field in the morning. I gain nothing by doing it. I might as well let it dry out until we get back from Berkey. And, and I don't have to clean the planter out again, and it's just simpler and easier to just wait and be patient. So we're gonna wait and be patient. And uh, we're getting the last two boxes that need to go to Berkey of corn loaded up. We're gonna get the tank hooked up to the planter so that's ready to go, fuel up the tractor, make sure that everything is good to go. And then we'll probably take off early in the morning to try and get there and see if Dad can get the tillage moving. And we'll do what we can. All right, so we got the tank hooked up. We're going to put fuel and DEF in. The tractor's not empty. we got like half a tank. And I'm quite sure we can go down and plant all of it on one tank of fuel and make it back. So we don't need much, but we'll fill her up. And we should throw some stuff in the tracks and take... There's a bucket of talc over there we're going to take with us. Okay, it's time for some easy job. We're gonna seed some grass. So I've got a bag of grass seed, got an old school seeder, and we got a lane we're gonna plant. Okay, old school seeder. So Dad's had this forever. It's got a little hand crank here, a little slide button to control it, and we've got a bag full that's got some holes in it, but we're just, yeah. We're just spreading grass seed, 10 foot spread pattern. Look at this thing. Gear driven, it's awesome. It's, it's awesome. It could use a new bag, but then you lose the, the, the printing on it. Cyclone Seed Sower, Urbana, Indiana. Pretty dang cool. Well, the whole, we used the whole bag to go from one end of the field to the other. I should measure the length so I know exactly what it is. I have a second bag of seed. We may end up using it, but we're going to go get that drag, run over it a couple more times to scratch it in the ground. And then uh, my buddy's got a roller. He's got a really big roller and a small lawn roller, and I'm going to get one of the two. I don't know which one yet. And smash it all down so that it's smooth enough to mow. Dad's back, and he disconnected his hose. That might mean he's done spraying. Are you done? 40 acres to go. 40 acres. Well, that's not too bad. You need to spray around. Yeah. We're just hitting this once, lightly dragging it, trying to cover that seed up and bury it a little bit. Now all I need is for it to rain. Don't rain. Don't rain for at least a few days. All right, guys. I am tired. I don't know why I am so tired, but it's just after 6.30 and I am, I'm beat. So I am going home because, well, I'm not doing anything anyway at this point. Dad's finishing up the spray and he had one more load to do, 40 acres. Won't take him very long. Phil, I assume, is planting those beans, like I said. And uh, we're going to try and have a big day tomorrow. 
I don't know how it's going to go. Dad is going to head to Berkey early and start working ground for us. I am going to head out fairly early with the corn planter. It's going to take me a long time to get there. Um, it'll take it easy, especially with the tracks and everything. And Yeah. Um, and then Brock's going to come down a little bit later in the morning, take over for Dad so Dad can do whatever he needs to do. Hopefully Phil can find some dry corn stalks somewhere that we can keep that side of it moving. And we're going to try and get a lot done tomorrow. Anyway, oh, there comes Phil right there. Thanks for watching. Have a great night. Hit that like and subscribe button. Make sure you check back tomorrow. We should have a little more action in tomorrow's video. If things are going well, there will be a live stream tomorrow evening. So watch for that tomorrow, meaning tonight, if you're watching this the day that it's released. So um, see everybody.